With Emerald officially switching sides to Ozpin's faction, I want to discuss how exactly she's going to fit in with the group. Everyone is working towards the same overall goal of defeating Salem, but certain members work better with one another rather than separated. The prime example being, of course, Team Ruby, and the remaining members of Team Juniper, Jean, Ren, and Nora, rather working together as a close-knit group taking on tasks and tackling them as a unit rather than being separated. Although Volume 8 did have them be separated for most of it, they are still in their designated teams, the ones that they are used to working with and work better alongside. So will Emerald join one of these pre-existing teams, or would she perhaps become more of a solo member, like Crow, or form a new group of two or three members, perhaps alongside Oscar or Penny? And given how Volume 8 is going thus far, and with the finale still on the horizon, the dark theme of the volume in general, well, there might be a few vacancies in some of these groups depending on what characters end up surviving, but I would like to get everyone's thoughts on this before we actually get to the finale, and then we can reevaluate afterwards. For now, I think that however things break down, Emerald is going to stick close to Oscar, most likely forming a group between just the two of them rather than joining an existing team. We've already seen hints of this already, but there is a trust growing between Oscar and Emerald more so than Emerald and other members of the group. There's still some tension existing between herself and Team Ruby and Team Juniper because of her past actions, but it has been Oscar that has been encouraging others to give her that second chance, to let her prove that she has changed through her actions, not just her words. And, showing that trust in Emerald, Emerald seems to be returning that trust to Oscar. And I think, just as Ozpin has Glinda at his side, or had Glinda at his side, Oscar will have Emerald at his side. And I think that they will form a strong duo on their own, and possibly bring more members into that group as things progress. Throughout Volume 7 and 8, Oscar kind of joined up with the remaining members of Team Juniper to form Team Alpine, but I think now that Oscar has used more of his magic, and his mind has merged a bit more with Ozpin's, and especially having Ozpin return, he's going to kind of branch off, become more of that advisory role, and Emerald will stick close to him. Now, of course, there's going to be situations, depending on what semblances can handle, what certain task, etc., where Emerald and Oscar are going to separate, work with other members, etc., but at the end of the day, they will come back and have their trust between one another. Not in a relationship sense or anything like that, just a mutual trust between them. And this could also fit from a fairy tale inspiration aspect as well. Ozpin, the Wizard of Oz, had Glinda the Good Witch, and now Oscar, being the second incarnation of the Wizard of Oz, now has the Emerald City. So, you know, as long as they follow the yellow brick road through the realm that Ambrosius has created, arriving in vacuo, a new partnership will be born. There's also the possibility that Emerald might join up with Team Alpine. If Oscar does take more of that advisory role, Emerald might work a little bit more closely with Jean, Ren, and Nora, possibly alongside Penny Polandina. I think in general that if Penny survives Volume 8, which is a question in and of itself, she will end up working closely with Jean, Ren, and Nora. There's already been a bit of a close relationship forming between Penny and Nora, and I think that that would be a good fit for Penny, and Emerald can join along with that as well. And they could even keep the name Alpine, because Penny could be the P, and Emerald could just add an E onto the name. So it would be a five-member team, doesn't really fit with Ozpin's rule of four, the four kingdoms, four relics, four members on each team, etc. But now that things are progressing the way they are in Remnant, and Remnant itself is falling apart with Beacon having fallen, Haven having fallen, and now Atlas literally falling to the ground. Well, um, yeah, the, the rule of four may not exactly be uh, strict anymore, or as strict as it was, so things might form up in a different way. And even if that is the case, there'll still be that trust existing between Emerald and Oscar, though I think the likeliest scenario is that they'll form a duo on their own. And, as I mentioned before, if it is just the two of them, they could eventually add more members to their own separate team, their own little group, that Oscar will kind of have his own sort of lieutenants around him, just as Ozpin had the four headmasters of the Huntsman Academies, Glinda, Theodore, Leonardo, Lionheart, and Ironwood, though maybe a bit more trustworthy or not, depending on who he draws to his side, as he might start drawing people that are all on the opponent's side at the moment, all on Salem's side, and eventually gather them around himself. 
not exactly the most trustworthy, but if Emerald is an indication, maybe Mercury Black will follow suit when they get to Vacuo. Because Mercury didn't really seem all that pleased with, you know, destroying all of Remnant as the overall goal of what he's working towards. Not really a place for him in that world afterwards, where if he fights on Ozpin's side, he'll be looked on more as a hero rather than someone who's just, well, dead afterwards. Because if Remnant's gone, all of the people are as well. I think that would be a better way for things to break down, but there's also the fact that everyone would have to get over Mercury being an assassin. He would have to change his nature a little bit, that killing is not the first option. It would be capture first, kill only when it's absolutely necessary, because no one really on Ozpin's faction enjoys killing. Except for Crow, he wants to kill Tyrion, and he's completely justified in that, but that's, again, a separate point. I think that eventually Mercury Black might join up with Emerald, and if her and Emerald are a duet, then they would become a trio, and if Neapolitan can get over that um, reliance on Cinder that she has, and her grudge against Ruby can be forgiven, she might end up joining up with Oscar as well, though that one's a bit more of a stretch. We have to see how things play out over the next volume or two. And there's also the fact that once we get to Vacuo, there will be a lot more characters brought into the mix with the return of Team Coffee, of Team Sun, and possibly the other characters that were introduced in the Vital Festival tournament. We have Team Auburn, Team Indigo, and various other characters as well. Professor Theodore, Professor Rumpole, etc. So there's a lot of different things that are going to break down, and I'm really curious to see how Emerald's relationship with everyone progresses. There is also the chance that Emerald's might be convinced to join Cinder's faction once again. Cinder got that talking to from Watts and showed a bit of emotion and character development, but I don't think that's going to change her as a person. Instead, it's going to allow her to treat people on the surface a bit better, just still pursuing her own selfish goals and not really caring about people. So she might try to silver tongue Emerald, saying that she cares about her, apologizing for how she treated her in the past and try to convince Emerald to come back. Hopefully Emerald won't buy any of that after seeing the genuine trust that Oscar has put in her, but We'll have to see how things play out in, um, well, Volume 8 and Volume 9. Volume 9 is going to be a bit of a gap volume from everything that I've heard thus far before we actually get to Vacuo, so it might be a while before we see how things break down. Now, the last scenario that I want to talk about is something that is spoilers for episode 13 of Ruby Volume 8. Though, if you've been on social media at all in the last 24 hours or so, you've probably gathered what that spoiler's gonna be. I'm still gonna give that warning nonetheless, just so people can click away if they so choose. But, Yang has fallen in episode 13 of Ruby Volume 8. We don't know if she's dead, likely not, Probably they won't kill off a main character like that, but if they did, that would be a hell of a twist. And potentially Emeralds might be able to join with Team Ruby at that point. No one will be able to replace Yang, that's not what I'm suggesting, but join up as a fourth member of that team. Her illusion semblance would be a lot different than Yang's, their team dynamic would change quite a bit, but it would be interesting to see. Having Emerald now working that closely with the people that she's wronged in the past, and wronged most directly, being Team Ruby, that would be very interesting. Though, if Yang has fallen and she stays dead, that would make it very hard for the rest of Team Ruby to actually trust Emerald, because her actions up until the point in which she switched sides could have been seen as leading to this end result, have contributed to this result, and that might be a hard thing for them to forgive. But we'll have to see how things break down in the finale of Volume 8. There's a slight chance in my mind that Emerald might join up with Team Ruby. Yang is likely going to be alive, and I feel like the other members of Team Ruby might follow Yang into the Abyss if the Volume 8 opening is any indication, and we'll have to see how that journey ends up going. So I doubt Emerald will end up joining up with Team Ruby, but I figured I'd mention it. Joining up with Team Juniper is certainly an option, and something that could be likely, though I think Penny is more likely to join up with Team Juniper. Assuming, of course, she survives Volume 8, they will form Team Alpine, and the most likeliest scenario for Emerald, in my mind, is forming a duet with Oscar, becoming Oscar's lieutenant of sorts, just as Glinda was for Ozpin. 
and that would kind of create an ongoing theme that Ozpin would always have, or Ozpin's incarnations would always have someone at his side with an absolutely broken semblance. Or, not necessarily broken, but extremely powerful. Glinda with her telekinesis was obscenely powerful, possibly the strongest semblance currently in the Ruby series, but Emerald semblance is in a league of its own as well. The hallucinations that she can create in the minds of others are extremely powerful, able to mask the sound and appearance of others and completely hide the presence of herself and others. Like, it is an incredibly useful semblance and someone that Oscar definitely would rather trust rather than make an enemy. But with the trust building between the two of them, I think that that is the most likely scenario and what the series itself is building towards. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. What do you think Emerald's position is going to be in Ozpin's faction after Volume 8, when everyone gets to Vacuo? Do you think that she might have a chance of switching back to Cinder's side? I really hope not, and maybe she'd be able to convince Mercury to join up as well. I think Mercury might be a bit harder to forgive than Emerald would be, considering he's an actual assassin and we've seen him kill someone on screen being Tuxin, but that was a ways in the past. Still, murder is murder. Emerald, I don't think, has directly murdered someone. There's a lot of things that would uh, need to be worked out, but more allies is better against Salem, so... I'm getting off topic. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. Who Emerald will end up working most closely with after the end of Volume 8. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, got you thinking a bit more about the future of the Ruby series, and if you guys want to see more Ruby theories, analyses, and Ruby videos in general, make sure to subscribe and join the Guild of the Eternal Flame. Tweet me at PhoenixKnight7, and I'll see you guys in the next video.